What's up again, everybody? Today we're going to talk about how to build a deck within the Flesh and Blood trading card game. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process that I go through just about every time I build a deck within this game. What I've done here and the things that I'm going to show you have really helped me with just making functional decks that play really well, they're clean, they're smooth, they're fun, and they function. As I go through the video, feel free to leave comments down below on how you would use this technique or how you would change this whole approach based on what you use to build decks. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video where I'll talk about my favorite tool for building decks in the game. Also, if you like this video and you appreciate this content, if you learn anything from this, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps grow the channel immensely. So by clicking the subscribe button, you help this channel get bigger and better. All right, so step one to build Building a deck within flesh and blood is pick the format that you're building for. The main three formats for building decks within the game are Classic Constructed, that's the main format of the game. You have Blitz, which is my personal favorite slimmed down format, and you have the Ultimate Pit Fight multiplayer format, which has its own set of rules. But first, you're going to want to pick one of these formats to build for. They all have their own unique build requirements, and they use different types of heroes, so picking one of those is really your first step. And as we go, I think it's really important to practice what we preach. So if you are a visual learner like I am, let's do this step together. I'm going to pick the Blitz format. Like I said, it's my favorite format. It's got a slimmed down 40 card deck and you use the young hero. Those are both important notes to make. Okay, step two, pick a class and a hero. I'm going to lump class and hero together because oftentimes, depending on what class you pick, you kind of know exactly what hero you're going to use except if you're talking about like ninja, mechanologist, brute, the ones that have multiple young heroes in this case. So let's go through this step as well. We picked Blitz format for the first thing, so now let's pick the hero Azalea and the Ranger class. So if we're picking that, we need to pick the young Azalea hero that has four intellect and 20 health rather than Azalea Ace in the Hole, which has 40 health. On to step three, and this one takes a little bit more legwork, and that's pick an archetype. That is a different thing in this game compared to other card games. Archetypes just look a little bit different in this game versus others. So the, the main archetypes within this game are the go tall archetype, where you try to send an attack that is really powerful and hard to deal with. Um, there's the go wide archetype where you try to send a flurry of blows that may not by themselves be that powerful, but because you send so many, you overwhelm your opponent's defenses. There's a mid range build where you could do a little bit of both or where you could adapt to your matchup. And then there's combo builds, which are essentially looking for a couple of pieces to line up at the same time so that you can do massive damage or a special thing. And this is where OTK decks kind of fall into. And it's important to note that certain classes really gel with certain specific archetypes like guardian is always about that go tall archetype it tries to deal massive damage with one big attack ninja is really always about the go wide archetype it tries to deal tons of damage with all of these little cuts and pokes so when picking an archetype look at what your class likes to do and what it does well and then build around that so in our case we can actually use a go wide or a go tall strategy with the ranger class and in this case i think we're going to do the go wide strategy okay so so far we've picked our format we've picked our class and we've picked our archetype the next step that really helps out the deck building side of things is knowing what the powerful cards in your class class are. Oftentimes these are the majestics, these are the super rares, these are the specialization cards in your class. And knowing how these cards work and what these cards do will also help you understand what archetype you can play towards. This also includes the legendary equipment that your class runs. So for example, in the Ranger class, we have the Skullbone Cross Wrap, which is incredibly important for the class because it helps you constantly know what's on top of your deck and if you can use the Azalea effect to pull a Dominate Arrow out. And these powerful class cards are not always the most expensive and high rarity cards as well. For example, 
example, Azalea's common arrows are incredibly good, particularly the ones we're going to put into the deck, cards like Headshot and Sikkim Shot. And as I said, these are particularly good in the Go Wide archetype because, for example, Sikkim Shot just has Go Again, and Go Again allows you to use another attack action because it refreshes your action point. Headshot is absolutely wonderful to reload into your arsenal after you fired one arrow, so we already with these two cards have a natural combo of playing Sikkim Shot from the arsenal and then reloading with one of our weapons, either the Red Liner or the Death Dealer, a headshot into the arsenal face-up, giving it the face-up buff. And this leads us to our next point. Find a bunch of cards that you like that seem synergistic and throw them together in little combos, in little pairs that you might be happy to draw into your hand on a specific turn and play. Just fill your deck with good cards like that, or cards that you think are good at first. And then, after you've done that, you can go to the next step. And that's figuring out how much your cards will cost to play and how many resources you can generate per card. Take a look at all of the cards you've included in your deck, and this may be a larger deck than the deck limit, that's okay. We can pare down cards after we mess around with this deck for a bit. But take a look at all the cards in your deck and look at the cost to play each card. Then look at how much you can pitch each card for and get a nice little average of each of those values. For example, put it all into a verbal statement like this. Most of my cards will cost one to play, and most of my cards will pitch for two resources. That's just an example. I'm just throwing that kind of out there as how you can kind of synthesize this together in your brain. If when you make this statement, you say something like, well, all my cards are going to cost me around three resources, and most of my cards only pitch for one resource, then you may have a problem on your hands because you're not going to be able to play much without just dumping your entire hand to play one thing. Now again, in a go tall strategy like Guardian, that's actually pretty normal. Most of their stuff costs like 5 or 28 to play. That's, that's a hyperbole. They don't really cost 28. But their goal is to just play one card, and they pitch the rest of their hand oftentimes to do other stuff. So keep in mind what your archetype is attempting to do when you're weighing your pitch costs versus your card costs. So with the Go Wide Ranger that we're making, we are looking to make a deck that allows us to make this sort of statement. Somewhere around half of our cards cost zero to play, and maybe half of them cost one to play, and most of our cards pitch for one or two resources. And if we've already put together some sort of a deck like we talked about in the last step, you can now weigh what you've created with that mentality, with that archetype, and with those pitch cost versus play cost cards. And that leads us to our last couple of steps. The next step that I would recommend you do is look at your deck and decide how many defense reaction cards you want to play. In Blitz here, we're going to probably end up playing, I don't know, four to six defense reactions. Six is certainly the high end, and four is about average. There are some decks, and this may actually be one, this Ranger deck we're talking about, that play very few, maybe zero defense reactions, and are only focused on trying to get 20 damage faster than your opponent. But overall, you should consider defense reactions as an invaluable part of your deck and think about whether or not including them and including them to what degree you plan to do. And finally, this is perhaps the most important step. Once you've created your deck, you should play it a whole bunch and you should iterate on it. That essentially just means play it, figure out what cards feel good, what cards feel bad, what cards you don't end up playing very often, and what cards you just love to draw and play on that turn, and then make changes based on all of that data. This is the most important step, and it's the one that is probably the most fun and perhaps the most time-consuming as well. Now, I did mention equipment briefly when I talked about including legendary equipment or deciding not to. As far as building an equipment list goes, it certainly depends on the format and the meta found within, but I do think you should build the deck first and then look at your equipment slots and think, which one of these helps me achieve the goal that I've set within the deck itself? You could certainly sit down and pick all of your equipment first and then build a deck around that, but doing it in this order makes more sense to me. Let me know in a comment below if you agree or if you disagree. So this to me is the process that I go through when I think about deck building within this game, and I think one of the best ways to build decks 
within this game and to really see how this all functions. It'll help you literally with every of the steps that I've mentioned thus far is going over to the website fabdb.net is literally the way and the tool that I use to build every single deck that I've built within this game. It's a website that allows you to look at the entire database of cards in one place while also allowing you to put together your own decks based on the cards that they have uploaded and then put into the system. It gives you a real-time breakdown of your pitch cost versus your uh, casting cost or your playing cost, whatever you want to call it, for your entire deck. It gives you a bunch of other little analytical things that help you kind of understand what your deck can do in its current form and how you can change it. There's even ways to import your own collection so that you can build a deck with your collection rather than just building a deck carte blanche so you know if you actually have certain cards or not. It's absolutely fantastic. It's totally free to sign up for a base account. If you're curious about how to actually go about using the website and uh, how to use all the tools within it, I would highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button because I will be putting out a video on that exact topic walking you through how to use every single functionality within the base and the premium version of FabDB in a couple of days. So hit the little subscribe button, hit the notification icon, and come back whenever that video goes live. If you enjoyed this, if you learned something about deck building within the game of Flesh and Blood and you would like to support the channel, hitting the like and the subscribe on this video helps a ton. It'll help other people find this video as well, and the more people that are playing and building decks within Flesh and Blood, the better the game is doing. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.